Hey everybody, welcome back. Another Gravity Ace devlog stream live thingy is about to start. Uh, just looking at my to-do list here. One day I'll get used to doing this. But that day is not today. Plus I'm a little out of practice. Although I was looking at my video history, and it turns out I'm not that out of practice. I, I didn't do it for like two weeks. And I wasn't doing it all that often to begin with. But All right. Well, let's see. What have we been up to? I added a speedrun option to turn off asteroids. It turns out speedrunning is kind of a fun thing to do in this game. Uh, asteroids can be kind of annoying when you're trying to do a speed run because they're random. I just added an option. You can leave them on, you can turn them off, however you feel like doing it. Um, fix some bugs. This was a big one actually. Glitching coins that were stuck in the wall. Got that fixed and taken care of. Um, so I wanted to do some visual effects stuff today because that'll be fun. And there's two issues I want to solve. One is there are some enemies you can hit um, twice and then they explode in the second hit, these drones. And when you hit them the first time, it's sometimes not clear that you've hit them. And it's also sometimes not immediately obvious um, that, uh, that they've been damaged, right? So I wanted to add some extra oomph to the effects for when you hit them and to let you know that they've been damaged so that you know it'll only take one more hit to, to finish them off. And then maybe I'll do something with the other enemies as well. Um, depends. Um, we'll see, we'll see. I don't think the other enemies need it as much, but um, probably couldn't hurt, probably couldn't hurt. So my first stab at this is, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I did, get this ready um, I might do some drawings right to an animated explosion uh, thing but I think for the first stab I kind of want to just do a particle system just because it'll be a little bit easier you didn't find your keys I did oh okay um, I'm gonna do a quick particle system first just to see because um, that'll be easier than drawing it. And, um, you know, that'll let me know if I'm on the right track or not. So I want to bring up that drone enemy. I guess there's two two things here. One is I want to, I probably also want to bring up explosions. Uh, oh, maybe not. Maybe not explosions, but the game scene. Because I want to, I want to have some kind of particle system that appears, or an explosion effect that appears when they get hit, but that's not attached to the enemy. And then I also want some show of damage on the enemy, and that will be attached to the enemy. So I'll need one particle system that's kind of global, and one that's attached to the drone. Let's do this one first because it'll be easier. So there's my drone. Uh, turn that off. <clears throat> All right. So this will be the damaged explosion, damaged particle system. Particle systems are pretty nice um, in uh, Godot. There's two different, well, four different kinds, I guess. There's a 3D version of the particle systems, and there's a 2D version. And then there's a CPU version in a GPU version. Um, if you can, use the GPU version, but if you're targeting lower end hardware, use the CPU version. These guys won't work unless you have a GPU. Um, I mean, these will even work with like an integrated GPU. I mean, you really have to be kind of low end to be doing these things. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm just going to use the regular Particles 2D emitter. 
And I always bump that up. The good, nice thing about doing the GPU particles is you can have just a ton of them. Like tens and tens of thousands. Do a particles material, and then in the particles material, you've got all this stuff. Uh, so I don't see anything happening. Got two inner particles. It's emitting. It's, they're probably just hidden behind here. So let me just ramp up their size a little bit. Oh, there they are. See if I only did like two. See that? Let's do 50. And then we'll do... I want, them, I want these to go kind of up. Oops. Like that direction. gravity. I want to make these detach from the drone. So if you keep this on, the whole particle system and all the particles will move with the parent object. If you uncheck it, they don't anymore. That's what we want. We want it to leave like a trail of smoke behind. Um, let's have a little bit of spread. This is like an uh, a plus or minus degree so they'll shoot out plus or minus five degrees if I set this to five and then we'll set an initial velocity of like I don't know, 30 and why is that going the wrong direction now there we go. and then I mean, that's looking okay already. Let's do a color variation. Not a hue variation. Well, isn't there a... Uh, no, maybe not. I don't want to ramp. I want to... Let's, we're getting in the weeds there a little bit. Um, let's make these things... Do that. Let's see if we have a texture for these. I might already have a good texture that I can use for the smoke. do a curve here so you can adjust the size of things with these curves set the max value to five and we'll have it be like it'll start big now start small and then can I get big shrink again yeah there we go something like that scale a little bit to make it a little easier to work with. Yeah, that 
looks pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, let's turn this down to 20. It'll make it a little more bumpy if there's fewer of them. some kind of color change on these guys um, but not a color change so much as a just a hue variation or a, a value change but I don't want the color to change over time I just want it to be random All right something like that but I just want the value not the Not the hue. Too fast. Let's make it much slower. Make the lifetime much longer. Nice. Yeah, I'm glad you like that. Hey, Dente. Yeah, actually, let's do it. Let's do a push today on stream. How about that? I'll show you exactly what it looks like. I, I was going to push this stuff out to, um, you know, out to public anyway. Um, so we'll just do it live. What could go wrong? <laughs> oh. Now I have a uh, pit in my stomach. <laughs> no, it'll go fine. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I could have swore there was some way to do a value change without doing a... Um, without changing the hue. Maybe, did I already write a shader for this? Let's just write a shader for it. It'll be easy. Add a material. Gradient curve. Are you talking about this color ramp thing? Yeah. So yeah, I can do a gradient curve, right? Something like this. And that, that's okay. That's cool. Uh, this one's going from black to white. Is this what you mean? Let's go. I think the effect I, I kind of want though is I want something like, yeah. I want something like, like this where it's more random and intermixed. Some of the puffs of smoke will be darker, some will be lighter, and they're all mixed together instead of having it, each one go through a, a ramp. Anyway, let's just see, let's just see. I think this will be easy. Uh, new 
shader, blah, blah, blah. Oh boy. Uh, shader type canvas item fragment, right? And then I do color equals um, color dot that. Does that work? Oh, is this for the whole? Sh this is for the whole system, not each individual particle. Ooh. Oh no! It is for each individual particle. Sweet. So this is taking the blue channel and assigning it to RGB in the output. Simple one-liner, right? But I am losing my alpha. Um, I think I can do that, get that back by doing... Um, here we go, get my alpha back. All right. Why why doesn't Why doesn't this keep the alpha? I don't I don't understand. I don't know why. Some things I can just not know. That's fine. That gives it a little texture, right? Um, let's change the emission shape. Right now they're all coming from this one point. And instead I'm gonna have it come from a sphere with a radius of, you know, let's say, let's say four. Uh, that's too big, let's say two. Yeah, right? about game size right there. All right, let's try it. Let's try it in the game. We'll call this uh, damaged particles. And when these things come into the world, their damaged particles emitting will be false and their damaged particles dot hide they will be hidden but when they are hurt when they are hurt then they will start emitting and they will be true and then when they are destroyed I won't hide the particle system, I'll just turn off the emitter. So that way any existing particles will just fade out. And when you revive, I'll do this again. Like that. In fact, do it. Am I calling revive in ready? I'm not. I probably should be. Let's try it. Let's try it this way. There's that dog again. You guys hear my neighbor's dog? <laughs> oh, effing dog. 
He's a sweet little dog. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this a little bit tricky and fun. I'm going to hide all these guys. Hide you. Hide you. Hide you. Leave you on. And when you're destroyed, he's going to activate you. And when you're destroyed, he's going to activate you. And when you're destroyed, he'll activate you. I get a little... Hot sneaky drone action here. And it crashes instantly. And the crowd goes wild. But this thing should have auto-saved it. Look at that, John. You know what you were doing today. There we go. Right, he's damaged. Boom. How about you, little guy? Oh. How come your emitter didn't turn off? Your emitter should have turned off. It's kind of fun though. So here's one thing I love about Godot is I can go in here and just change the code while it's running. False. Yeah. False, 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 false. Uh, I can go in here while it's running and I can actually just change some of these parameters, which is cool. So I can have it just make way more particles, just so I can see how it looks. Alright, you go over there. Now this guy, he should stop um, smoking when he explodes. Unless I have to reload, I think I have to reload the game. Some of these changes aren't, <laughs> don't um, automatically take effect in the game because I'm using what's called, I th this is my theory, I'm using a preload to load some of these things into the game. And I think when you use preload, it may not reload some of the, like the initial, the, the entity that I'm creating, it's in memory not on disk. So I can change running instances of it, but that reference I have in memory isn't changing, so any new ones coming in will have the old stuff. That's my theory anyway. It doesn't really matter to me, I just know I have to restart the game sometimes. It could be that I just coded it wrong. Why isn't that turning off? It gets hurt, it starts emitting. And when it gets dead, it should stop emitting. Mm. Oh no, this isn't the thing I thought it was. That's not the thing I thought it was. This is the thing I thought it was. I want it in here. It's kind of fun seeing that smoke. <clears throat> Let me reload it and see if my if these guys work right. Gotta remember to keep my posture right. I keep hunching. My neck's already starting to hurt. All 
All right, that's really getting annoying now. Why isn't that turning off? I'm just gonna put a break point here to see what's happening. Right? It's running this code. Is this code not doing what I think it should be doing? Right? So this guy, this drone, is this guy, right? This is his stuff. Where's his, where is he in the tree? Does this load him in the tree? Here he is, right? It's this guy. Damaged particles emitting is off. It shouldn't be emitting right now. Let's see. Also gonna stop emitting and you're gonna stop emitting and yet here they are not stopping <laughs> this is like um, <laughs> I feel like a priest this is like <laughs> when you're at uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been to a Catholic mass uh, Oh boy. See ya. See if it comes back down. Oh, that's just fun. I mean, leaving the smoke on is not the end of the world. It just annoys me that I don't know why it's still on. Where'd he go? Here he is. Most of the enemies in the game, when they go off screen, I have them stop. Just so you can go and catch it again if you want to. Sometimes you'll drop a crucial box, like one of these guys, right? It's like an important one. And you're like, oh no! But it's right there. <gasps> it's not right there. Oh no, what am I doing? All right, why isn't this turning off? Well, what's turning it on? When it comes into the world, it's off and it's hidden. If you're hurt. Oh, that's what it is. You get killed, but then you get hurt again. I didn't indent this properly. This should only happen if you're still alive. If you're alive and you get hurt, then yeah. Start emitting these smoke. But if you're already dead, don't do anything. I think that'll take care of it. Don't don't do things if you're already dead. Don't pretend you're alive if you're already dead. Silly drone. Right, here we go. This time's gonna work. It didn't work. Oh, look at that spiral. That's sweet. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I love that. I love that spiral. That is cool. Uh, 
Oh, I see why it's doing that. It's because I've got, you know what I should do? Well, Jesus, I got two problems here. I know that's running. Let's put one right here. Now let's put this right here just to see what's turning that thing back on. It's something stupid. I just, I, I don't know. I'm not tired. Right, so it's loading it in. Should load in all four. Right, that's good. I am calling revive when it comes in. Oh, I see. All right, so I'm going to play these and it's going to do it again. Or maybe it won't. All right, so this turns the particles on. And this one will kill it. So oh, look what it did. So I, I hit it, right? It's alive. Particles emitting is true. And then... It never went to dead? Oh, it did go to dead, but I didn't put a break point there. Let's take this one off. All right, let's let's kill another one. So that's turning it on because it got hurt. And this is dead. And then it turns it right back on again because it thinks it's still alive. There's some, um, I think, yeah, see this is from a callback, right? So the problem with these callbacks is they can happen out of order. And when this callback happened, yeah, when this callback happened, so this one, this one happened, right? Sets so alive to false and false. There's a race condition, right? But at the same time, my code was already in this loop because the um, hurt function had been called as well. And that turns it right back on. And because there, it's a race condition, you, I'm not sure which one's going to get there first, but it looks like the dead, the die is happening first. So if that's happening, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. It's, it's, no, it's not a race condition because of that. It's, it's because I'm an idiot. I'm calling die, which turns it off. And then I set it right back to true again. This needs to come first. If you're alive and you take damage, then turn on the particle system. But then if your health goes down enough and you die, turn it right off again. And I was turning it off first and then turning it right back on again, like a doofus. So now that I've got the code in the right order, it should work. Third time, right? No, way more than three times. Fifth time? All right, here we go. Yeah, see, it didn't even have time to... Boom. Mm hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that works, but I actually don't like... Oh, for crying out loud. Are you joking?
Hit it once, there's the smoke. Hit it twice, smoke turned off. And now you're off screen. Right, you're, you're dead. Hit you once, hit you twice. you turn back on? Why did all of them turn back on? Not that. That only come, gets called once when it comes into the tree. It's gotta be this. Let's try and reproduce this. Boom. And boom. So it's gonna go right, right to here, and then it's gonna go to here, and then it's gonna go to here, and it's gonna turn that off, and it's gonna continue about its merry way. off. <laughs> it's off. Sit. came back on all by itself and it didn't call that method. That's telling me there's something in the particle system itself that's making it come back on and I'll bet ya, what could it be? What could it be? Why would a particle system start emitting again when you didn't, when you told, when you didn't tell it to? Maybe it's a bug this guy. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So this thing, when it goes off screen and then comes back on, when it goes off screen, it'll take all its siblings and its parent and disable them. Right? All this stuff. And then when it comes back on screen, Unpause them. So to make that not happen, 
It will only affect notes with the same root. So if I put these damaged particles as a child of this, say, I could remove them from the tree. Um, I could. Uh, I don't want to though, because if you if you just cue free the um, particle system, then all the particles attached to that particle system will delete themselves instantly, even ones that are floating off away. I want to just stop it emitting, and then um, that way any particles that it's already emitting will still be floating out there, and then they'll gradually die out. Um, and, and in fact, I want to put a timer on this thing so that uh, they don't stop emitting immediately, but after a few seconds. That way you can s always see some smoke trail as things are, as it's dying instead of just instantly shutting off. So I think by moving it as a child here, this visibility enabler won't be turning it off and on when I don't expect it to. Let's test that theory. <clears throat> Stuff's complicated. Uh, let's, what is this? Oh. So it's searching for this now, but it's not there anymore. And remember, this is all just prototyping. I just want to see what it looks like. Ugh. <laughs> uh. And maybe what I'll do eventually, at some point, is replace this with something else, but we'll see. We'll see. It, maybe they'll have the same root. I'm not sure what they mean. The drone is still the root, right, of this scene. But I think what the documentation might mean is... Um, nodes with the same root. I think the root for the visibility enabler is this guy. And now the root for this scene is this guy. That's what I think. But we'll see. So the way to test this will be, I'm going to blow all these guys up. Actually, let me just get low here. Blow you up. All right, and then if I go off screen over here and come back, no, nope. see, maybe you're right. They do share the same root, right? It's that it's that top parent level. Yeah, so they mean the scene root. So you're right. My intuition on that was wrong. So that'll go up, and when it comes down, the smoke will be on. No. <laughs> Bless America. Uh, there's some fuzziness in when it thinks it's off screen. That's really off screen, right? There it is. All right, so just moving it down one didn't help. But at least I know that's what's causing the problem. It's the visibility enabler. I do like that trail though. I guess there's really no harm in letting this, letting them smoke like that. And you know what I can do instead, knowing that that's what's happening. Let's do this. So now, now I've learned something new: visibility enabler, right? It's a bitch. Uh, I'm gonna do this. this. Do this. Right? 
um, true. This can actually be something like just go way down, something like that. So it'll still smoke, but not as much. Oh, that's interesting. Particle owner. Maybe. You're off screen. Come back. Yeah, so there's the smoke still coming out, but it's much, much lower rate. This guy will puff like crazy. And then. Yeah, it's kind of not quite the effect I want. Let's turn that. Let's leave that. I wish particles wouldn't turn back on with the visibility enabler. Is that a real property? is Rethinking my life choices right now. This is a simpler way to do this. I think I have a process node, or a process, yeah, I have a physics process. I'll understand this better. Well, let's just see, let's just see. Let's see if this works first. <laughs> and while I'm at it, I'm gonna turn down the number. And yeah, let's try it. Uh, thanks for the offer, Leonard. You don't have to do that. Um, if you want to, I'm all ears.
Hmm? And if I go off screen and then come back, let's see if you're still smoking. Yeah. So the owner thing didn't work. But that's okay. <laughs> it was a good idea. But that's okay. Because this, I guarantee you, I would never understand in a million years why I did that. So, I'm just going to do this in process. Um, if five, just do that. Every every physics frame. If I'm not alive, just turn off the emitter. That should take care of it. Let's see, it's off. Let's kill another one. No matter what the enabler does, I'll just keep turning it off. That's fine. I do think I like the smoke though. So I think the upshot is <laughs> I like it better with the smoke on. And I'm going to leave it on. So. Okay, solve the mystery. <laughs> solve the mystery, but I think I'm gonna leave the smoke on after all that. Uh, that'll be false. Hide. That'll be true. Show. And then this, I'm just gonna, yeah. If you revive, it's gonna hide and, and turn it to false again. But if you're dead, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna keep it, keep it going. Let's change that back up to that. Oh, that's interesting. Check. Let's check that, Leonard. Let's check that. That would be a clue. I like how we're doing all this debugging, but I'm not 100% sure if it's a intended to work this way or if it's a bug in the engine right all right now we come back to you no so that's interesting That's true. Yeah, let's do that. Let's unhide it. Remote. Drone. Uh, are you visible? You're visible. Visible, you're visible. Are you visible? There we go. Let's turn you on. Yeah, see, it is smoking, right? Shouldn't be, but it is. Okay, it all makes sense. It's the visibility enabler. Killing me. All right, so I think I'm gonna leave the smoke on. I, I like the smoke. So um, two things. One is it's going the wrong direction right now. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what I want to do is remember I'd rotated this thing. I want to unrotate it, and then I want to undo 
the initial velocity thing. And instead I want to do a gravity of like nine minus 100, something like that. Minus 300. Oh, whoops, that's not gravity. Do a gravity of like minus 100. Minus 20. Minus 60. Uh, minus 30. And then I also want to do a damping. So you see how it just keeps going faster and faster, right? Because it's like an acceleration. So I'm going to do a damping on it um, to slow it down. And that'll be like too much. velocity on these. Is this, I wonder if this direction I wonder if this direction is independent of the direction that it's rotated. Does not seem to be. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be. So I don't want to use that. if I should do this isn't quite working out the way I wanted it's still accelerating right and to make it not accelerate I need to make the damping equal to the gravity but I want it to shoot out um, maybe that should be zero Initial velocity should be 30. Um, damping will be 15, right? So see, it'll go up, but then it slows down there towards the end. As smoke does in air. Forget the fact that we're in space, it doesn't matter. And then um, what I can do again in my physics process Did I lose my code that was here? Am I losing my mind? It's just going to set the rotation to zero. So it'll just keep going up no matter which way. Um, <laughs> that way, uh, they'll just keep going up no matter which way the drone rotates. Uh, all right, let's see if that works. Uh, let's re 
first start. In space, no one can hear you scream. Boom. Boom. Oh. I removed that because I didn't want it. I didn't want to do that. That's why I removed it. I am losing my mind. Here we go. See, so no matter which way that guy's rotated, the smoke's still going to be... going in the upwards direction. That's cool. I should make the smoke red. It doesn't look very pixel arty. And now that I'm seeing this this variation in color, I, I think I don't like it. Um, just letting it sit with me for a little bit. I don't think I like it. So I'm going to turn that off. Yeah, I like that better. Uh, I think I want to use that red color. This red color here, E43, B44. Good old E43, B44. Oh, I gotta turn off my shader. Let's go ahead and just get rid of you. That works. And now that I see this damping, I don't like the damping either. So let's go ahead and just turn that off too. Yeah, better. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but you see as they fall off the screen, um, the particle system kind of winks out of existence as they get as their distance um, increases from me. See that? So as the camera comes down, see that, and then goes away. That's controlled by this, this visibility rectangle. So I can make this much bigger, um, you know, make it like minus 320, uh, minus 180, 320, 180, right? That's an entire screen size for me. 640 across and 360 up and down.
So that'll be much more natural. This shouldn't disappear. Right, until I get away. Much more natural. The smoke should be purple to match their purple color, their death color. 68386C. right uh, uh, so it should start at minus 320 and go for 640 and then it starts at minus 180 and goes for 360 See them down there just smoking away, dead. Yeah, actually, I, I think I think that's cool. And frame rate. Where's my frame rate? Let's turn off the V-Sync. See what the real frame rate is. Six. 100 frames per second. Got a little headroom. It's fine. When those particle systems go off the screen, basically didn't change where we're wet. 650, 670, 727, about 650-ish, right? And then in here, when they're on screen, Is it lower? Maybe a little bit. It's hard to tell. 20, 30 frames per second lower, but. When you're at 600, who cares? Thanks, Sko. So this guy. I think it'd be nice if they were smoking away too. Especially when damaged. Well, let's just keep it to drones for now. a glove. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. nice. 
That works nice. There are some strange gaps, like, um, well, not strange anymore, but like you'll see it go off here and see this trail, right? But now the visibility enabler has paused it, right? So see that gap? Those gaps are because the visibility enabler turned off the particle system, right? Just temporarily. But, you know, nobody's really going to be doing this kind of stuff. It's fine. I'm the only one that's going to be messing with the game in this, this level of uh, obsession, I would think. Slam. All right. All right. That's enough of that. So I need another effect, though. Um, I need one too, where when it gets hit, right, the impact didn't really. It's not very impactful. That, right, not very impactful. something here. There's like... Hmm. I thought at some point I had a um, a particle system that would that would appear when the bullets hit something. But I must have turned it off. spark. Spark. Is nobody using it? Explosion makes it. Ship makes it. This not getting called anymore? It might not be. I think I might have moved this when I refactored some stuff. I screwed something up. I did. I refactored this stuff, but didn't move it all correctly. Um, hmm. I think I might have refactored this in a different branch and I left some of the code out in that other branch and some of the code was in this branch. I might not have merged it correctly. 
because I'm missing a sound effect. I'm missing my sparks. It's just not calling this at all. And it's not calling these either. I mean, why isn't this in the bullet? <sighs> this is my ship script, right? Yeah. This thing, this whole game is getting out of hand. <laughs> I remember when I refactored this stuff, but I can't remember why it's half here. Hey Robert, how you doing buddy? See if I can find that code. Uh huh. Yeah, see, it was in a different branch. So in this other in this other branch what branch is that? This branch. I probably stop, stop. I moved all this stuff into bullet. Yep, I did. And when I, when I, yeah, so what happened was I was working on this branch for power bullets and um, back in September. And then at some point it wasn't working. So I put it into its own branch and I moved back to the main branch and I didn't bring over all the code. I didn't put all the code back in the main branch the way it should have been. So for a month I've been missing this. Holy crap. Let's fix that. So back in here, I want to pull in. <sighs> Don't even know. Don't even know what to say. Um, let's do a commit first. pull in to the bullet scene all this stuff all this nonsense I was doing in the ship scene so I'm going to pull in the sound effect for each bullet yeah that's what I'm going to do and the ship will lose those 
And then I'm going to pull in these methods here. From ship. And put them in bullet. And I need that, that impact um, guy. So be here. Then, yeah, this method is either going to call hit enemy or hit generic, right? These two. I have my sounds. Did I pull in the right ones? I did not pull in the right ones. Oh wait, I did pull in the right ones. I was looking at the wrong tree. <clears throat> um, yeah, so it's gonna pull, yeah, it's gonna play those. Bop, 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 perfect. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. So when you die, it just needs to call this. Position, rotation, no. Oh, position, rotation, body. See how that looks. Hey, Slacks. Can't believe that I've been looking at this for a month and I didn't realize that I that it happened. There we go. There's some more impact. See those? That's what I want to see. Hear it hitting things? Well, maybe you can't. I can. Turn that off. Turn up the sound effects a little bit. Hear that when it hits the. And when it hits an enemy, it'll be a slightly different sound. right reversed. That's over on the left side of the screen. That's over on the right side of the screen. Oh yeah. Look at all those sparks. Love it. Alright, that's what I was missing. One of the things I was missing. I still want to add another effect to the drone. 
disgusting yet. Can't believe. Careful with your refactoring, kids. Don't pull a John and mess it up. All right. Am I on the right branch? Thank goodness. All right. How come I'm seeing this still? There we go. All right. When you do a search, huh? When you do a search, it searches all the branches. When you're not doing a search, it's just this branch. Okay. Fine. Push that out to ye old GitHub. Where's my music? Let me know if this music's too loud. Nobody's complained, I guess, so it must be fine. <clears throat> All right, I still do think I want something uh, in terms of like a impact smoke. So what I'm gonna do is create a scene. 2D scene, call it impact smoke. And inside of that, I'm gonna put a particles 2D again. And I'm gonna make this emit, I don't know, just a bunch, 120. And we'll say it lasts for four seconds. It's very explosive, All right? Something like 95%. Um, kind of random. Emitting off. And then, <clears throat> that's fine. Particles material. Now this one's gonna not need, it doesn't need gravity or anything like that. It's just gonna kinda like poof, right? So I need it to go in uh, every direction. So the spread's gonna be 180 degrees either way. So it'll just be in a circle all around. Um, I'll do the emission shape as a sphere again, a s kind of a small sphere again. And the initial velocity at like 50, no, 120, but with a high damping factor of like, 80. Let's see how that looks. Kind of big. Uh, let's put these numbers down to 60 and 30. Oh, that was the spread. 60 and 40. Make that 
think the damping needs to be higher. Mm -hmm. Let's do the velocity a little random. You guys will see. You'll see. <laughs> it's kind of in my head still. Uh... Alright. Let's get that texture for smoke that I was using before. the scale. I'm going to scale curve again. And remember, this scale curve is the time from 0 to 1 is the entire time that the particle lives. So this will be when it's first born and this is when the particle dies. And my particle is alive for 3 seconds, so this scale represents 3 seconds. So <clears throat> at the end, I'm going to have it go to nothing. Um, but it's going to get to nothing like like that pretty quickly, right? So I'm gonna, something like that. And these things are pretty big. So I'll have it start small, they'll grow. fade away like that. It's making donut shapes which I don't really like. Let's change that color to uh, that purple that we like for our enemies. That thematic purple for damaged enemies. 68386C. I try to have everything in, in uh, gravity stick to the same color palette. Let's change. Yeah, that's fine. Let's change this random to be really random. Yeah, so some stuff really gets out there and some doesn't. Right, that takes away the donut effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the scale, I'm gonna do a little randomness on the scale as well. So some of these particles will be bigger than others. I think. Maybe if you're using a curve, it doesn't do it. See how it gets out there? It kind of grows, right? So imagine you're, you're shooting the drone and then you see this puff of smoke, right? You want it to really be fast, but you don't want it to spread very far. Let's try that. Let's put this in the booms folder. This will go with my other booms. Call it uh, impact smoke. 
Uh, let's add a script. And let's do a doesn't have a um, wow you guys got to hear that dog I wish I wish these particles had a um, signal on them to let me know when it was done emitting that's fine add a timer three one shot auto start Time out. Be free. This guy is has a lifetime of three. I'll make it a one shot. I don't need to actually. It's fine. Let's do that. All right. And let's do this. Let's go into my game scene and just make these things appear <laughs> on every impact. It might be too much, but let's just try and see. Kind of, yeah, I think I want them to kind of move up a little bit. So let's give them just a tiny bit of um, gravity. That's not what I want. That's not really working. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Let's change that to 100. Let's change that to 300. 200. 50. So this can be, you know, 60, this can be 40, like I originally had it, but I can actually just speed up the whole thing. Something like that. Throws off my timings a little bit.
Let's see how that looks. And actually, oh, you know what? I can solve this problem a different way. Yeah, I can solve this problem a different way. That's fine. Let's do that. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, they're going to last for up to three seconds. And then I can just change this emission shape to be a little bigger. Right? Now let's change this a little bit as well. See how that looks. A little ridiculous. Make them smaller, like that. Yeah, I could put it behind them, but I think I want the spread to be a little smaller as well. So that means increasing the damping a bit. Um, maybe decreasing that a little bit. And then Maybe decreasing that a little bit. And decreasing that a little bit. That's about in-game size right there. I could fade it out, but I don't like to fade things out. Um, in general, um, in this game, although I do use um, transparency quite a lot, I do try to use I, I do try to use alternatives to it. So instead of making things transparent and uh, fade out, I'll I'll shrink them instead. And you get a similar effect, but it's different. And one thing that you get is um, in cases where you know, multiple of these particles will overlap. You won't get a, you know, you won't see the line where they overlap, which you would get if you have, if you used um, alpha transparency. It's just a style choice. There's no real reason for it. It's just um, aesthetically, that's kind of what I'm going for. Yeah, they do for sure. Let's do this too. I want to take this guy. Let's oh uh, no, let's not rename it. Let's create a new scene from it. 
here. And let's do one more thing to make it really over the top. Um, debris. And let's add in those. Let's see how it looks now. See those trails shooting out of out of it because they're attached to each piece of debris. <laughs> I don't know. On the one hand, they're kind of neat. Um, they're fading out too fast. They, they disappear much too fast. I kind of like the idea, though. Yeah, I, I don't want them on everything, though. So I gotta remove it from the spark thing and just put it back on. Oh, sorry, dude. Let's bring you back to life. Let's put you down here with your buddy. You guys can hang out. Now though, let's say it's a no on the debris. And let's say that's a no as well. Or rather, let's do this. Let's make this a separate function. So this will this will only appear on drones. Let's reload all my scenes. Hmm, slouching still. That's cool. Okay. Uh, I think I do want this smoke to always be... Hmm. 
Where's my layers? I don't think this is accurate anymore. So it is accurate. But my enemies, they're all going to be within that game layer. What are walls? Walls are negative one. And my drone. cool that he can hide in the smoke. The player is always above it. The player is like on layer 10. Hmm. Why are those guys spawning the smoke? I didn't delete that, that's why. And now that's not doing anything. Sometimes I really do feel like I'm losing my mind. I don't think I'm getting my impact smoke. Oh no, I am. But I don't want it when they die. I want it on the impact, not when they die. Maybe I want both. Maybe I want both. Let's do both. So when it dies, but also when it gets hit when it's hurt. Boom. Boom. I like that little burst it gives right there when they die. I think the spread is too slow. <clears throat> the visual effects stuff is never done. It's never enough. That's too slow. If I made the lifetime shorter. Yeah, but I want it to last a good long time. I just want it to pop. And I think the only way to do that is increase this velocity and increase the damping.
increase the gravity so that it keeps going up. Let's go back to a point. Hmm. Sphere 20. Sphere 6. That would allow me to take that down. Take that down. Take that down. I could even start this uh, curve so that it starts out with the full size, yeah. That's the, orig the initial impact, boom, and then fades out, boom. Try that. There we go. Oh, yeah, now we're talking. Now, if one of these drones gets away from you, you can kind of follow its breadcrumbs, see where it went. Got my sparks back. I think I want the bullets to also kick these things a little bit more. Right now when a bullet hits one of those drones, it doesn't really move very far. Um, the bullet's momentum will transfer to the enemy, but the bullet the bullets are very small. They're very, they're not massive, right? So they don't sometimes move things um, very strongly, right? But. Uh, where is it? There it is. But if it hits something, that can be hurt. 
I could do a... If body is rigid body 2D, then body dot apply central impulse. Um, with my current velocity, but normalized, and then times, I don't know, 100. There's angular velocity as well. <clears throat> see what that does. A little bit of a kick. Let's give these drones some uh, some hit points, just so we can practice hitting them. Let's bump that up to 200, just so we can see it better. the amount of damage the bullets do, not how many hit points the drones have. Natural, as natural as I'd like. It's definitely doing something. Um, it's partly because it's <clears throat> each drone has its own physics, um, its own physics integrator here. This method modifies its velocity outside of the physics process. Mm, it's just clamping its max velocity. So no matter how big of an impulse I set it to, it's going to get clamped. fine. Maybe, well this is getting a little too complicated. I should probably restrict my, yeah let's, let's restrict my, let's save that for another time. <laughs> um, so what have I got in here commit wise? 
I've got my damaged particles scene. I've got my impact smoke scene. All right, those are brand new. Impact smoke runs and then it Q freeze itself. And then I've got my game. I have a new method in here. I've got impact smoke and I've got this impact smoke method, which creates an instance, positions it. Fine. And then the drone is the only one using it. Uh, drones should have max health too. Let's fix that in a minute. Can I revert it right here? And yeah, drones when they're hurt, puff some smoke. And when they die, they puff some smoke. That's it. Drones have this new uh, damage scene, damage particle scene. Right, with all the. Actually, why, why should this be here? Let's. save that because I don't think that should be there. Let's go to my drone. Let's remove that. Add back. Yeah. So these, these types of scenes, I like to give them all capital letters just as a visual cue to me that it's a um, imported scene right like this and this I mean I, it has this too and <laughs> you can see I don't do it across the board but <clears throat> this lets me know this is it's just another clue for me it just lets me know these are scenes from someplace else so let's see what I got in here now uh, yeah, that name change, that's fine. Why is this curve? It's part of the particles material. I wonder, this curve, I think... Hmm. really weird that this is here because this is a curve and particles material but the drone scene shouldn't have a curve and particles material right now because I removed it let me just close the scene and reopen it That's fine. That's fine. That's weird, but I don't care. <clears throat> uh, drone, damaged particles, and smoke. So I did that without any new art being required. <laughs> I don't know if it would have been faster to do it with art, and I might still replace it with custom drawn animations later. Um, but that'll work for a first pass. That'll work for a first pass. So, done done this I brought back 
I tried that and didn't like it. Let's do one more thing real quick um, before we do a push to uh, to Steam. Show you guys the ye old build system. So, oops, in the level chooser, uh, the level buttons, I want to add a, uh, an indicator of the rank that the person got. So, I need another... Hmm. I think I want to do this with a sprite. I think I might already have it done. I might already have the art done for this. Where would it be? Rank? It would have to be here, here. I've got my A, B, C, D. They're, these are the very big ones though. Let's do this. Game over, textures. Way too big. Um, let's say, let's just try resizing it. That's not so bad, actually. not so bad. So how big is that? Pixels tall, eight by ten. That could work. All right, let's load up. Let's save that. Ooh, let's do this. Let's put it. No. Let's do that. There we go. Don't save. And we'll load up our B. We'll do the same thing. Oh, terrible. Terrible. The B looks terrible. All right, that's what I was afraid was going to happen. The A looks okay. The B looked terrible. Let's do um, that. Uh, the B is this color. Let's go... B. And then let's open up our C and go C. Oops. New frame. I'm making a sprite sheet with these guys, right? C. Let's just replace the A as well. Gonna be gold colored, and B will be bronze colored, C will be silver colored, and no rank will be 
red colored. Outline each of these. A B. is kind of that cyan and yellow and F the no rank is red and this very very dark yeah so let's take that kind of keep the spirit of it This color F uses this color. Pixels enough. C is two pixels. And then three pixels up, but I go right, left, right. Right, left. Oops. is flat f is flat making things hard on myself for no reason Also on an angle. Go like 
Save that as small pink, and I'll export it <clears throat> um, by rows, right, like that. And I will save it to small right PNG. All right, then I can add that here as a animated sprite. New sprite. Load my texture, small rank, small rank. What? Did I already have one? No, okay, small rank. And that is four horizontal, one vertical. Select all four, add four frames. And I will call this my rank. And I will move it. Right there. And depending on which frame you're showing. Right. <clears throat> um, yeah. Zero, one, two, three. So this loads all the level data and it loads the status of the level. I'm not loading anything else. Um, I can load level stats. How am I doing it here? That's what I want. Oh, rats, I didn't do the S. Let's do one more frame. Need an S. S A B C N R, and then in my level button script,
if uh, Just do this. I, this is ugly. I could use a enum for this. I could use a helper function. I could use lots of different ways to do this. Or I could just be done. Let's see if that works. And some JavaScript so I can keep putting semicolons everywhere. So if there's no rank or there's no stats, show NR. Otherwise, show an actual rank. Let's look at the level chooser and see what it says. that. And if I reset the campaign, uh, if I should have it not, yeah, I should have it not show the rank at all. Rank hide. otherwise rank dot show. Yeah. And then once you've played it, then you get a rank. And if I go back to the levels, I should see my S. Yeah. I wonder if I should change that background color. Or that outline color, rather. I think the outline color would look better dark. Does look better dark. Let's go through here and get a get a no rank.
Yeah, that looks good. Another visual clue of levels you need to go back to and deal with. Okay, that works. So that's the new art, the import file for the art. The resource being loaded. My animated sprite. And it's fine. My new rank sprite. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. And this is the script for that. All right, this handles if I'm running it in the engine. So if I go here to the level chooser to look at it, no stats or you don't have a rank then just hide it otherwise show the rank and pick the right frame yeah that's fine s a b c f safe that's safe All right, let's do a build. <sighs> Who asked for a build? Al dente. <laughs> Al dente, you're still here. <clears throat> this is for you. All right, so I guess I'll just show you guys. You, 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 a lot of you have probably seen this before. I've talked about this before, but I have a build directory. I have a build script. It's just Python, um, but it does a bunch of stuff. It, it, it um, checks that I'm on the master branch. First of all, I'm only going to build and push the master branch. Um, at some point, I probably want this to. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I thought about having this just pull the master branch into a new working directory and then build that. Um, maybe. Maybe I'll move this whole script off to some other server and have it just build every time I commit. Maybe. Uh, but for now, I run this manually. It's on my own machine. And it just checks, are you on the master branch? If you're not, I'm not going to build. Which is kind of nice because then it, it's sort of a reminder to me, you know, like, what are you doing, John? Are you are you working on the right branch? Are you on the branch you should be on? So here I am. I've been committing to master, um, which isn't great practice if you're working in a team. But since I'm working solo, it's fine. Um, it updates my version config file with the latest commit and that version config file is this and that gets compiled into the game and you see it on the home screen right here right so my build process updates that file and then builds the game and that file has this data What else does it do? It increments the version number from that config file, and then it tags it in Git. 
right? So you see I've got a version 35, I've got a 34, a 33, right? 31, so it tags it. That way later, if there's a bug, somebody can say, yeah, I have a bug with version 32. I can go and check out that specific commit, build the game and fix the bug off of that commit. Um, it creates a change log, which basically just takes all of the, uh, what do you call it? Commit messages, puts them in a file for me. And um, then it does the builds. So it does a build for these three platforms. And it runs um, Godot's headless version. Godot has a desktop version, they've got a server version, they've got a headless version. And I'm running Godot 3 headless here to do the builds. It's just exactly the Godot engine, but no, none of the visual part of it. So no editor, nothing. It's just all the codes there. So it'll still compile and everything. So I use that for the building. It builds them all, puts them in the right directories and says it's done. Then I can call this script push. And what that does is it just, you know, walks me through a little process here where it says, hey, here's the version number, are you good with that? Here's the uh, change log, are you good with that? And then it pushes it to itch using itch's butler app and it pushes it to steam using steam's uh, uh, steamworks sdk and then when it's all done it posts the change log to discord for me so let's do a build so a build is just as simple as this oops build build boom you see it's updated the commit in the version config, updated the version number, tagged git. So if I refresh this, I'll see a new tag up here. There it is, version 36 EA, right? And that is concerning. This warning I've been getting on the Mac OS builds um, has something to do with the icon. I don't really care. It's just a warning. This is concerning. What does this mean? I've never seen that before. Interesting. So this is a problem apparently with the with the headless build that it can't export an icon for the Windows version. Still open. That's fine. So let's let's see. Um, where's my build script? Let's not use the headless version. And let's. build it again. Let's see what happens. So this time it's going to open the Godot window, right, while it's doing the build. This is why I switched to the headless version. But if it makes errors, I don't want the errors. So I'll just deal with this. Um, 
So I still got that warning about the icon on the macOS version, which. Uh, I don't even know what I'm going to do with Mac OS. With Mac moving to their new hardware and not supporting Vulkan or OpenGL anymore. I think if you own a Mac, you're probably not playing games anymore. In the very near future, you will not be playing games anymore. I'm probably going to drop the Mac OS version is what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Complain to Apple, I guess. If it won't run on their new hardware. <clears throat> um, I think I might have destroyed my change log. Let's... Uh, where, where do I put that thing? Here it is. Here it is. Right, so I've got 37 and 36 right here, right? And this is all the changes since 35, which includes for everything from updated change log private. Yeah, right there. So this is the change log I've got, right? Which I'll post to um, which I'll post to um, what do you call it? Itch and Steam at some point um, when I make the announcements. But the, so that's that's the build. I mean, it goes super fast. And then to to push it, let me save that, and then I I'm gonna add it to my. Add it here. Oops. And let's see. This will be new and updated. about. There's nothing impacting players in that. These are bug fixes. And these private ones are just for me. Um, fixed. Okay. So that's my change log. So then I can just do um, build push. It just verifies that I've got the right, um, um, what do you call it, uh, version number. Say yes. It's showing me the change log, right? Change log of OK, I'll say yes. And then it pushes it out. So it'll go up to itch, pushing the Linux, the Windows, the Mac OS build. And then it's gonna push to Steam. And then in a second, yeah, there goes Steam. So it's pushing all this to their, to the depots up there. And then um, it'll ask me if I want to post a um, Discord announcement, and I'll say yes. Um, actually, I won't say yes because I need to go into Steamworks still and then mark the new build as um, active, and then I'll and then I'll say yes. But as you can see, I mean, it's mostly automated, pretty easy. Um, so there it is. It goes pretty fast. Um, I'm, I'm happy with it, you know? It does some checks on me to make sure I'm not pushing something that I shouldn't be. Make sure I've got a change log written, you know, every time. 
so pretty pretty simple, pretty fast. The whole game's only about 100 megabytes, and Butler and Steamworks only push the differences, so the uploads go super fast. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Gravity Ace 2. There'll probably never be a Gravity Ace 2. This is going to be it. But don't hold me to it. <laughs> um, so that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out on a Saturday with me. Uh, wow, this is a long stream. It's been three hours. Um, I'm going to stream again. I think my schedule says Tuesday night from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And then again next Saturday. So, again, thanks for hanging out. Tell everybody you know about Gravity Ace. Go spread the word. We need more players. Um, follow me on Itch. Wishlist on Steam. Come check me out on Twitter. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for hanging out, everybody.